She has her own fan base, man. Like, there's literally people who subscribe to me just for my mom. They're like, you know what? I'm only here for your mom. Sorry. And I'm like, it's all good, man. It's okay. <laughs> I love it. You're listening to Daily Note, presenting by Almost Sideways. Hey everybody, welcome back to Almost Sideways on YouTube. My name is Adam. We are also an audio podcast. You can find us on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, and Pandora at Almost Sideways Movie Podcast. But for today's episode, I have a very special guest. We're going to have a nice sit-down conversation and get to know this YouTube creator even more. So today's guest, without further ado, is my good buddy, Matthew V. Haynes. Matthew, welcome. To almost hey, 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 thanks for having me here, man. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All his links are going to be in the show notes of this podcast and episode, so make sure you check out and go support Matthew V. Haynes. Actually, first off, before I tell, uh, get, get really into my first question, tell people at home where they can find you on YouTube and social media. Yeah, um, you can find me uh, right here on YouTube, uh, just by searching up the name Matthew Matthew V Haynes or just Matthew Haynes. Uh, you can find me there. All my social media uh, handles are the same thing: Matthew V Haynes, uh, Twitch, Twitter, um, yeah, Instagram, YouTube, all the same thing. So many more stuff than we are. So <laughs> not quite on the Twitch yet, but TikTok too, my- actually. <laughs> there we go. Like I said, I've said this before. Every time I hear TikTok, I always think of Kesha because that's a song that's, that she sings. In the... Anyway, uh, so it's been a long time since we've uh, actually collaborated or had interacted for a long time, but it's good to ha- talk to you again. Uh, first of all, I got to say big congratulations. Congratulations on getting engaged in 2020, man. That's awesome. Good news. Thank you, man. It's, it's you know, it's, it's this this type of uh, this year has just been so um, unpredictable with everything that's going on and I was like, you know what, man? I was gonna do it anyway. Might as well just do it right now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, you got to bring in some positivity. Of course, bring out some of that negativity in, in the world right now. So, of course. Hey, man, made an unbelievable moment. That's awesome. I'm happy for you, dude. Thank you, man. Um. So anyway, let's get in. Let's jump into this. I guess the first thing question is: You've been on YouTube for several years now. What kind of really kind of what passion did you think about? Like, this is why I want to bring this passion to the YouTube space. <sighs> Well, um, let's see. I, I started YouTube in, well, funny story. So I've been on, uh, actually on YouTube since 2008. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was uploading at that time a lot more like drum cover videos. I'm a musician, so I did a lot of drum cover, just kind of experimentation kinds of stuff. And uh, most of those videos, if not all of them, are private now. <laughs> but it was all like experimentation. I was still, you know, like, you know, school and stuff. So I'm like just trying different things. And I just completely didn't use it for a while. I didn't really use it. I just kind of took off the, all the videos. And in the fall of 2016, um, I went through a pretty bad, uh, bad breakup at that time. And I was like, you know what? I needed something to, to keep myself busy. <clears throat> Uh, just because I was, I was, it was bad. It was like I, I put on weight. It was a bad breakup. It was so bad, and I needed something positive to do. Yeah. So I decided to start uh, the channel in 2016. I used to watch a lot of like uh, uh, reactors, big reactors like Tyrone Magnus. I used to watch oh. all those. Yeah, like Tyrone Magnus and some some people that I have the uh, the um, incredible opportunity of co- of collaborating with now uh, that I used to watch a lot back then and. Um, you know, I was like, you know what? I'm a huge nerd. I grew up watching Star Wars, grew up watching, reading comic books all my life. And I was like, you know, I talk a lot and I would talk to my friends about everything. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to be, I'm going to try to be like some of these guys and just have a way to kind of voice my opinions on, on all this nerd topics and talk with the people in the comments and everything. And one thing led to the next and, and different experimentations. I tried vlogs and all kinds of things. And here we are. <laughs> hey man, that's 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 awesome. You gotta start somewhere, man. And, and it's unfortunately unfortunate that a bad breakup happened, but a silver lining is that with that situation, you get you had a I'm glad brought you to this yeah. space. Yeah. I'm glad and, it yeah, brought you to this place now. And you know, 
I, I remember the first time you and I ever interacted with, I, you probably do as well. It was on Rhino Tools channel. We did Rotten Refresh. Mm-hmm. Actually, somebody couldn't make it, and I got it was the last minute's replacement for that episode, uh, funny enough. And it was the first time I actually interacted with you, and we've since collaborated on like a Thor Ragnarok spoiler review. Yeah. You brought in Blore, the Black Thor. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> good, good, some good, great memories. But what I, what I always really enjoyed about you was your how really passionate you were about the different uh reacting and you never as a reactor yeah i i, I react to trailers every once in a while back when i was doing youtube a lot full time um how um is it hard sometimes to uh, you know when you're reacting to something is it all natural like that is that that's, that's not who you are all the time or do you have to turn I'm, it up to 11 or what do you no, have to do no 100 like that and it's actually a pretty good question because um a lot of people ask me this question from time to time and uh i unfortunately know some um reactors in the industry that just kind of fake things but yeah. I, that's never that's never been who i who i was yeah. in the beginning i've i've always been this kind of person like even to this day if i'm like I, i'm watching the crown right now i started watching season oh, wow. one yeah. on my own just just just, just kind of watch it and i'm sitting there and i'm watching it and i'm like freaking out and i'm like oh my god i'm talking the same way that I would in a video. Sometimes I may not be I may not be as loud sometimes just because like I'm, I'm watching this thing in, at midnight and I can't scream or something. But um but no, but it, I've always I've always been that way. I've I've I and even to this day, if there's something that is slow, like for instance, if I'm reacting to a show or something, and something slow is going on, you're not gonna see me overreact. You're gonna see me just kind of taking it all in and listening to what's going on. But if something's crazy is happening, it is hype. I'm gonna get hype, <laughs> and I'm I'm the same way off camera. I'm the same way, you know, with with, with some of my close friends and. A lot of my close friends would w- would tell you that I'm the, I'm the same dude on and off screen. <laughs> it's always about being real for me, so that's just, oh. this is what it comes down to. Absolutely, man. And like I, I I knew the answer to that question before I asked. But I gotta ask you, you know, because you and I, well, you and I have interacted before, and you're, like, you're a very real guy, and I <laughs> that's what I always liked about you too. So uh, you brought up uh, Tyrone Magnus, and that's a guy I've used to watch for quite a long time. That guy's really funny as well yeah. and um it's crazy have you ever actually interacted with him before no i actually never had a chance to meet uh tyrone um ironically i know we live in the same state <laughs> that i do know um but uh no i haven't had the chance of uh, of meeting him or uh talking with him but um i've met some of his colleagues before some people that he's he's been friends with on the platform for a few years and got the pleasure yeah. of meeting them but no, never, never Tyrone. I get a chance to be him as yet. <laughs> fingers, fingers crossed. Moving forward. Yeah, maybe one day, maybe, maybe, awesome. one day maybe one day I'll meet him. I know, I know. Uh, one of my friends had a had a pleasure of running running into him in the mall, <laughs> of all places. That's pretty, so. that's pretty yeah. crazy. Yeah, we had a we live up here in Washington, so that's mm-hmm. where Jeremy Johns, one of the big movie reviewers, lives. He lives actually like in Puyallup, which is like a super small town, or not oh, small, wow. but you know, it's not one like the big big city, but. It, we had a, like Justin watches movies is another YouTuber. Like he ran into him at a Walmart. Like it was crazy. And <laughs> he actually went, to, they went to the same movie theater together too. Like really? he sat, so he's like, he was nervous to like see him. So it's crazy when you see somebody outside of the, the YouTube space, uh, you're like you get nervous, <laughs> nervous. Exactly. I know I would. Yeah. But anyway, it's, it's funny. Cause I wouldn't really, uh, it's, it's, it's weird. Um, I used to have a lot more of that, uh, that stardom kind of like I'm feeling, you know, crazy that this guy or this person that I watch is in front of me. But over the years from uh, having the pleasure of being invited to different like conventions and doing a lot of press stuff um, for the channel, I got the pleasure to meet even more people in the space. Yeah. And I would, and like literally there was uh, Jason Momoa and uh, walked in front of me and my buddy and winked at us and I was just like, oh, hey, it's Chase Momoa, cool. Like, it's come to the point where it's like, I don't really even freak out anymore. And it's, it, it scares me because I'm like, it's freaking Jason Momoa. I should be screaming right now. This is, <laughs> but I'm not. So I, I think uh, sometimes for me, like, if I'm working, I'm in the headspace and I'm like, there yeah. to work. I don't think I'm really think you know, thinking too much about like, oh my God, this is this, this, you know, person, this big person. I don't really focus too much on that. And I think maybe it hits me later on that I'm like, holy crap. Like I was triggering this person, and you know, so I've 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 met people uh, through YouTube that I watched a lot, and and when we're working, 
I wasn't really shocked to see him. But then when we afterwards, and like I remember coming off of a collab I just recently did with a bunch of big reactors, and I came off and I was like, holy crap, I just did that with all these people. What the heck? Yeah. <laughs> You know, it's crazy. You know, sometimes yeah. you're so focused on something. It's just like you're focused on work and you're just trying to get the job done, you know? Yeah. But, it's like I got I got to get point A to point B, at least compartment, compartment, that one word, compartmentalize. That's, <laughs> it's a tricky uh, word. <laughs> my, it's a bad time to have a speech impediment all of a sudden. <laughs> oh, I, um, I don't remember one of my first collabs that I did. I, I My first one was with Durbin. Uh, Durbania, which we, you know him, but Sean Chandler was one that I was kind of like starstruck when I was super nervous. We were doing like a Pixar ranking thing. Yeah. And I was like stuttering. I was like, uh, uh, what do I say next? But as I did a lot more of them when I was doing it, it became a little easier, like what you were saying. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if there was somebody, like you said, Jason Momoa walked in front of you. If there was an, was it, if you're still in that headspace and somebody else that you weren't expecting to be there, would you be kind of like just like taking it back, like, oh my god, that's that's that person I'm really like a fan of? Is there somebody like that? If you hear uh, my huskies barking outside, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're good, man. My dog's on the other side of that door too. So. So, he's so stubborn. He's so I don't know. Um, but funny, th the, the thing about Jason Momoa, we weren't expecting him actually. We were actually waiting in line to meet um, uh, Matt from Critical Role. I'm not sure if you're familiar. Oh yeah, with yeah. okay. But, um, we were actually in line. Me and my buddies were in line to meet meet them. And this guy just comes out of the curtain blasting metal music with a with a boombox and his bodyguard. And we're just like, oh, okay. You know? So, <laughs> but I will say, though, if it was somebody like, because I'm a huge fan of Gal Gadot, Gal Gadot from, you know, Wonder Woman. If she walked out, I would fanboy instantly. I would, like, cry like a little boy. It would be, it'd be crazy. Like, <laughs> I feel in that moment that I would be, like, just star completely starstruck, you know? Yeah. Um, there he is. Yeah, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I have a Doberman, so like every once in a while, if he's outside, he'll bark at like doing his loud barks. So don't. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, Gal Gadot, Gal Gadot would be a crazy one. I, I know for me personally, if I Winston Duke Mbaku, the best, the best comic book MCU hero that's on the screen. He's by far the best one. I don't. I'm not going to hear anything else. Mbaku's the best character in the MCU. And he he he, rep he represents uh, where I'm from. Actually, he's actually from because I was born in Grenada, and where he was where he's from is actually like a two hour flight oh, wow. from where I'm from. So he's like a big inspiration to Caribbean boys like myself. <laughs> But that's yeah, awesome. no, Win Winston's a good choice. I would yeah yeah. That's for whatever reason like his character as I thought about Black Panther and I, I really enjoyed Black Panther quite a bit. However, I've just felt like T'Challa was no disrespect to Chadwick Boseman or anything like that, but I felt like T'Challa in that film was kind of like the least interesting character. I wanted to know so much more about this world and all the other supporting characters around T'Challa because I'm like, we already saw him a little bit in the another film. I want to know more about these worlds. And I just kind of gravitated to M'Baku and Winston Duke. And of course he was in Us. Now I just want to see everything that he's in. I think he's always the most interesting. He's such a talented actor anyway. Yeah, so I'm like, there's a, lot of layers like there's a lot of layers to him. But anyway, uh, Winston Duke, that's my guy. <laughs> Uh, you did mention that you came from Grenada. Uh, what? How, how did you come from here up to uh, New York? Um, okay, so uh, a lot of people actually don't know this. So those who are watching this actually will hear, be hearing this for the first time. So exclusive. <laughs> but, yes. Um, <laughs> no, but um, I have uh, I have a, I had a sister who unfortunately passed away mm -hmm. um, back in 2010, and she was diagnosed with cancer. Mm. And uh, back way, 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 way back in the early 2000s, um, we came up here on invitation for treatment, for a medical oh, treatment. Okay. Wow. So that was the main reason that brought uh, that really brought me here, because my parents, they were uh, touring musicians in the Caribbean. They had oh, a wow. music school. They had a 14-member band. Um, so they were doing pretty good for themselves back home. Yeah. Um, but, you know, life happens. Things happen. Yeah. And, and, you know, years, you know, years happen. And. You end up being here, you know. So that's just kind of how I ended up here. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, it's not. It's awesome that you're able to come up, come up here. No, yeah, yeah, I understand. It's, you yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's unfortunate circumstances for sure, but it. Your parents seemed like they gave, like they sacrificed. You know, you know, prominent musicians in their country, but they they loved their their kids, and it seemed like mm -hmm. they were wanted to take care of them. So that's that's 
That's yeah, really it was, awesome, it was like no choice at that point. It was like, you know what? No, like this is, you know, this is a, you know, their kid, you know, yeah. and they gotta do what they gotta do to, to make sure they can take care of her. And she lived a great life, y'all. She she lived a really good life, um, and she touched everybody around her, including myself. She she actually inspired me a lot to do a lot of things that I did, um, yeah. and inspired everyone around her. So you know, you know, in, in, in a weird way, everything has a has a purpose in this life, even if it sucks for a little yeah. bit. And unfortunately, this pandemic uh, is a gr- is a great example of that. Like, there was a lot of sadness and and hurt during this time for a lot of people, but also through that, a lot of good has happened for some people during this time. And and, yeah. and you know, sometimes uh, it actually like I know some people who never got a chance to spend time with their father before this time. They got they got way more chance, you know, way, way more chances to spend time with their family than they would have had you know, it before. So it's, it's kind of like a, I don't know, like a double-edged sword kind of thing. Life is like that where, yeah. it, you know, there's always something good in between the chaos, you know, and there's a lot of chaos out there, but yeah, that's true. you know, and, and everything has a purpose, you know, it's, it's, it's everything has a purpose. That's kind of just what I, I, I boil it down to. Yeah. That's, that's very true. Uh, man, it, this, this pandemic, um, well, I know like last week, um, unfortunately I did, I lost my father really rather suddenly and it's been really, it's I'm crazy. Sorry, like, oh yeah, it's, it's, I'm, I can't still haven't processed it quite completely. However, you know, the thing is I got to look back at, I got to look at this way. You know, he, everything he taught me was for a reason and it's made me who I am. One of the last conversations I ever had with him, he told me how proud and how he saw how much I was working hard, not just to for my family, but also for my headspace too. Cause I was kind of, I have, I have anxiety, depression disorder. So I, I was working hard and he was actually seeing that. And he was told me how proud, how, uh, how proud he was of me. And that was like, that's something like, you know, hearing that just kind of, just makes me, you know, this make it makes me happy and pretty proud of myself with something I can't, I can't really say before. So in, unfortunately I, I lost him, but he's never, he's always right here. And those words that he said was always going to be here. So just like, you know, the, this your situation is always kind of inspiring you to do, be better as well. That's the same thing for me. And it's, it's, it, it's one of those things like like death is never easy. Like it's never easy. I lost my grandmother, you know, and and you know, like, as I mentioned, my sister. Obviously, a father is a bl- is a big blow. Um, yeah. But it's one of those things where. Um, I'm starting personally to, to look at death in a different way than I yeah. have before. Um, because it, it's not easy. It's really not. Um, but I try to find a positive to it and like looking at that person's life as, you know, and, 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 and that, that's why every day I always go out of my way to make sure that I, I, I have make great memories with people and that I respect and treat people yeah. nicely you know, because you never, unfortunately, know, and it's the memories that matters, and that's what lives with you for the rest of your life. You know, so yeah, it, it, it's it's a it's a it's a crazy it's a crazy time, man. It's a crazy time, but you know, and it's, yeah. it's, it's hard to change that kind of thought process. It took me a while. It took me years to get over my sister. Years. Yeah. Um, and I don't think I fully. You'll ever fully get over it. You know. Yeah. It's always gonna be part of you, like you said. It's always gonna be part of you, but um. You, you you trend you 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 know you're thankful that you you know have like family and people other people that you can rely on and you kind of come together you know yeah absolutely yeah well <laughs> we're gonna speaking about like being positive and trying to like change your mindset you know you did mention that you were a drummer and yep. I, I take it that you did learn that from your parents I, I I'm, I'm assuming maybe that's where at least the the seeds were planted. Yeah, that is definitely where the seeds are planted for sure. <laughs> I um, I I think I remember my mom telling me uh stories, um, about when I was younger, and there used to be this bell, down the street from this church bell, down the street from where we used to live, and it would every day at twelve it would start making you know doing its bell thing, and then <laughs> and she would talk about me being in Pampers making beats to it and stuff. <laughs> I obviously I don't remember that, but you know, she would say that's what I that's what I did. <laughs> so, um, that's awesome. Yeah, no, it's it. Yeah, I d- they definitely were a bit a huge inspiration in uh, my musical like goals and you know things about me being a musician. Like, I grew up around it. I grew up yeah. around having musicians all over me, all, all around me. And that like 
uh, I take it like the culture is like really ingrained in that kind of stuff too, especially if you grew up in it, like you're mm -hmm. going to be around at 24 seven. It's, it's, it's the YouTube is big in my life now, but music is like the biggest thing in my life at, 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 at my core. It's always been music. Yeah. Always, always. Mm-hmm. I, I know some drum you have do you have any covers up on on online right now that maybe I could put in the comment or the description box so oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Out, yeah absolutely I think one of them um, I, I and I found a great way to fuse both of my interests together with like my love for comic books and also my love for music and uh, when the infinity war trailer came out this is by far the biggest uh, most viewed video on my channel for music related content and um, I I think it was a day after the Infinity War trailer. It took me about six hours. I did a whole cover of the Avengers theme song from the all the synths to all the violins, the bass, all the other different instruments. And I played the drums live in a Spider-Man costume. <laughs> and I recorded it, filmed it, edited it in six hours. And I think it got somewhere around like 75,000 views or something like that. And it, it's it's it was, that was one of the, the most like fun times I've had like on YouTube and, and that's actually, it's on my channel. It should be like on the, the homepage of my channel uh, somewhere yeah. there, but yeah, absolutely. That's uh I did that. I did the uh, star Wars, the last Jedi kind of oh, rendition. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I did that. I think um three, no, 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 two days before it came out in theaters. And nice. um okay. yeah. And then uh, I did Thor Ragnarok after I saw that movie. I don't remember if I did anything else. I think that was that was like yeah. the main ones that I did. Yeah, but yeah, yeah absolutely. That's I, I got. I, I remember watching that uh, Infinity War one and the Last Jedi too. But I I totally for for whatever reason I didn't. I guess forgot that you were doing <laughs> Spider Man and hearing that story <laughs> after so many years. I'm like I gotta go check that out. The Spider Man Blider, drumming, guys, come on. <laughs> Blider Man drumming. <laughs> <laughs> Blider Man. <laughs> That's great, man. Mm -hmm. That's great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Blider Man. Um, I guess that's another thing. You're you're mixing some music with uh, you know superhero stuff. Uh, do you play any other instruments before I ask the superhero I, question? I, I I do actually. I, um, and it's funny. I uh, I my latest cover is unpublished simply because um I didn't really like the mixing, but I did a cover of the Black Widow trailer music, and it's one of my favorites. I think it's actually the best one I've done to this date, music-wise, because wow. I've improved so much as a musician over the years, but I just didn't post it. <laughs> it's, 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 it's recorded. But yes, I do, uh, to answer your question, I do play other instruments. Um, piano, guitar, um, drums, of course. I played tenor saxophone in my mar in my high school marching band for two years. Wow, there we competed go. Competed state, competed national. Um, we won the state, we won the national champions uh, in high school, so that was, that was, that was fun. Um, the bass, I play the bass guitar. I play various percussion instruments, uh, you know, everything from gem bass to, you know, um, uh, other forms of, of miscellaneous percuss percussion instruments. I play uh, a wide variety of those. Right on. That, that's, wow. That's, yeah. <laughs> uh, I was not expecting that many, but I'm happy to you know. Oh, no, there's, there's a couple more. <laughs> You play cowbell. That's the question. You play cowbell. Of course. I actually, oh. that was my specific role in the concert band. That's <laughs> cowbell. I actually has sheet music too and everything. You got a cowbell it can be a very interesting instrument to play just because sometimes you have to play on off beats. Oh. And any musicians who are listening to this, you know what I'm talking about. It, 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 it can be complicated sometimes depending on yeah. the music and, you know, where you got to come in. That's <laughs> yeah, true. So in high school for me, I actually played the trombone. Oh, nice! Yeah, I, yeah, I played trombone, and uh, I also play air guitar. I'm pretty good at it. I'm, 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 I'm rocking it down. Uh, but yeah, I played trombone for like three years, man, and just <laughs> uh, yes, I played for three years, and I just I, I switched schools. That teacher, unfortunately, just like kind of. I don't know. I don't know if you've seen Whiplash, but oh, I, oh yeah, I, one of I my had favorites, yeah. I had one of my Mr. Fletcher, and unfortunately, yeah. I'm not like Miles a Teller in that movie. I did not overcome to try to make him make him prouder to show him up. I just said, "Yeah, I'm not, it's not for me anymore. I'm just mm -hmm. I just kind of put it aside." Unfortunately, and I was like just focused on sports or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, but yeah, it's, it's unfortunate. But I enjoyed my time playing um, trombone. 
especially I had a couple of solos. I did like um, I learned how to play. We did the Flintstones theme song, Star Wars, which oh, is another nice. one. And uh, nice. this this song that I remember is the trombone mambone, which is a, a strictly a, a trombone solo solo. So it was crazy. I had a lot of slide motions in there, and and just learning how to do that and process that that music and reading music is actually a, a, a kind of a lost art. A lot of people don't know how to do exactly. it. Exactly. So, yeah. And I think that was and you have to keep make sure you keep your beats and keep time and stuff like that. And it's, mm-hmm. it's really it's it's it seems so daunting, but when you're in there and you're learning it, it's rewarding at the same time. It is, and and, and you know what's, what's what's crazy is um I, uh, I never liked the theoretical side of music. Mm. Um, I have appreciation for it now that I'm a little bit older. Um, but when I was a little bit younger, on uh, my early teens, uh. I hated reading sheet music, especially for drums. I hate it because I was better at air playing. I was better at playing by air. I was oh, better. Yeah. I, I one of my skills, I think, is um I can listen to a song maybe about two times, and I'd have I know every single part of it, and I'm good to go. I can I can play, it. and I, I I was able to to do a couple gigs that way. Like you know some some people, they would have a drummer that's out, and they need a drummer to fill in. You know like a session drummer. That's that was one of my goals, and uh, to become was a session drummer. And um, I, all I got to do is listen to the song a couple times, and I'm I'm good to go. I'm ready to go, I'm ready to play it. Um, but I I do remember because uh, like now, if I'm doing anything on my own, like the covers, I just listen to. It. I don't even look for sheet music. I just listen to it because that's my preferred method. But if mm-hmm. I'm writing something or if I'm composing something, um, and I'm I'm supposed to be working on a project with a good buddy of mine, uh, to compose a TV show that he's working on, uh, right now. Oh wow! That's uh, awesome. Yeah, yeah. I can't go too much into detail on it um, as of right now, but <laughs> but um, but yeah, no. Uh, uh, I'm I'm supposed to be working on that. So like right now, I'm like studying uh, source material stuff, music wise for that. And so when I work on that project, I'm gonna have to use sheet music and stuff wow. in that's case awesome. I that's have. A, that's other a big people. opportunity. That's awesome. Oh yeah, no, it's it's a, it's a great way to you know build up my portfolio for you know having different projects done. You know. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, is there any other like? any musicians, drummers, maybe specifically that you kind of like look up to and kind of inspire you to maybe hone your craft even more. Oh yeah. Um, there's a, a few drummers that I really looked up to. Um, especially when I was auditioning, cause I actually auditioned for a music school in high school when I was, uh, uh, tr- uh trying to go to college. I didn't get in cause I auditioned at the, uh, when there was like very, very, very limited spots. Mm. Um, and they had people on reserve that were already ahead of me. So I didn't get in. Like it kind of discouraged me, so I didn't do it again. <laughs> Which is why yeah. I never went to college. Um, but other opportunities uh, uh came after that. But um, but yeah, no, I looked up to and I still look up to drummers like uh, Gavin Harrison. He used to play for a group called Porcupine Tree, a British group called Porcupine oh. Tree, and they're a progressive uh, progressive uh, rock group, and um, Gavin was one of the most talented drummers that I've ever came across. Uh, Gavin, there's another drummer that graduated from the school that I wanted to go to. His name was Matt Garska, mm. and um, very versatile musician. Uh, plays for a, a progressive metal band called Animals as Leaders, wow. and um, they play some insane. Uh, musical uh, pieces, like just some really, really insane stuff. So I, d- I definitely looked up to them. And um, one of the old legends in the jazz uh, realm was Buddy Rich. Buddy Rich was someone I looked up to um, a lot just because of his uh, his speed, his technique, and he's been in the business even as an old man up until his death. Um, was playing jazz at at at, at some inc- incredible speeds and precision. So the list can go on, man. I got so many other inspirations, but yeah, <laughs> the list can go on. But those are like a couple of main main people for me. That's that's awesome, man. It's always good when you're like into in a field or whatever. You can look up to somebody. You can like, okay, well, this is I look up to their work, and I can kind of like try to improve, to try to kind of replicate some of that you know, what you're seeing and from other musicians too, and get inspiration from, which is awesome. That's yeah, awesome. man. Mm-hmm. Uh, so let's, let's move into kind of more of the thing. Maybe people kind of know you a lot for is, you know, you know, superhero stuff and reacting as well. Uh, obviously you said you grew up on comic book, comic book reading and comic book, that like genre. Yeah. Is there a specific character in comics that you really have kind of felt a personal connection with that, mm-hmm. uh, 
you get it like this is why and and, and also you feel a connection with but also this is why a specific reason why you like that character um that goes back to uh to spider-man for me and then and, and um if you don't mind i'll share a little story about that absolutely uh spider-man and my grandfather i talked about this in one of, my, one of the videos i did yesterday my grandfather um was the one that got me into comic books actually because he mm -hmm. uh grew up in british guyana and read a lot of books in the 50s and the 60s a lot of comic books a lot of batman spider-man um, all of the old detective comics, and he had loads of them. And uh, yeah, I, I lived with my grandparents for a while when I came here when I was a lot younger. And he gave me my first ever comic book. So prior to him, I saw the Spider-Man, the Sam Raimi films. When I was a little bit younger, I saw the Sam Raimi films, and I saw those. And I was like, man, this is awesome. Yeah. But he gave me my very first comic book. It was The Amazing Spider-Man. Wow, and okay. um, the the infamous Amazing Spider-Man, the book. And I read that. I'm like, whoa, Spider-Man's dope. Yeah. I'm like, he has all these this web wings underneath him. And like, man, this guy's dope. And then I started reading. I kept, I kept on reading and reading and reading. And I saw a lot of myself in, in, in Peter. Wow. As when I, at that age, um, just because he was this kid that had a lot of potential and he was a scientist and I'm a, I'm a, I have a working knowledge in a lot of big sciences and I'm a big science guy. I oh, love wow. science. So I was like, man, this guy's, he, he's who I would want to be if I was a hero. Like he, you know, he, he, he loves his, his uncle. He takes care of his family and he's super smart. He, he makes his own things. He made his own suit. He made his own. I'm like, this guy's awesome. So, uh, and the struggles that he went through and his relationships and stuff like that, man, it was like, man, he's such a hopeless romantic. That's so me. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, no, Spider Man and obviously other characters kind of. I, I see myself in, in many different characters um, throughout history, but, um, uh, and throughout all of the, the, the superhero stuff. But Spider Man was like the main reason why I got into yeah, comic that books. Mm -hmm, that, was, that was the guy. Mm hmm. That's awesome. Uh, ha is there any other characters that you've really enjoyed over the years that kind of um, are not are, are by no means the, your favorite, but kind of a close, maybe a second place, third place type of favorite hero? Um, yeah. Um, I, uh, well, also growing up too, there was Static Shock, just because oh, wow. um, as a as a you know a young black kid, there wasn't too many uh, heroes on screen that you could see. And look at you and see yourself in them. So Static Shock was one of those growing up that I watched, and I was like, "Man, like this kid, this could be me. Like that's awesome." And like you know, I remember taking off the the, the top of the trash can like he did in the old animated, <laughs> standing on top of it and stuff like that. So it was definitely him. Um, he, he was played a big role too. Uh, Thor also played a very big role. Um, you know, in in me and one of my favorites. Yeah. Uh, growing up, and obviously uh, Black Panther. Black Panther. Um, I got really, I got more into Black Panther after I saw Civil War. To be honest, yeah. So he's more recent. Um, but I was like, man, I gotta learn more about this guy. This guy is awesome. And then I, I went into the very, very beginning, um, back to when he was first introduced in Fantastic, uh, Fantastic Four. And right. then I kept on reading and and going through. Uh, the chronological order, and then started going through the years till I caught up to uh, Tanahishi Coates' run uh, back in like 2015, to, no, 2016, I think, or, is when that came out. If, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, but I, I read everything, and I'm like, man, this guy, and of course, representation, you know, this is African king that was just totally cool and had all this money, had all this intelligence, knew all this different martial arts. I'm also in, into martial arts as well. And so it's like, man, this guy knows all this. He's like the Black Batman. This is awesome. And I'm like, you know, so uh, I would say, I would say uh, Black Panther would be one of the biggest ones. Yeah, but I got plenty. I love. I just love them all. I I, I love love all of them. Superman yeah. was also a big a big one too for me. Yeah, that's awesome. That, okay, so Static Shock. I'm not. That's the one that you mentioned that I really don't know anything about. I do know that they're in the process of. I think Michael B. Jordan. It was is mm -hmm, in the process yeah. of bringing that character to life, and I think that's awesome. And you bring up representation, and you know that's something that's definitely a lot of the superhero movies, for the most part, you know, are white guys or yeah. white 
you know, and that's that's how they were depicted in the novels. However, it's like we need we need to bring in more characters, not just have the same people be recasted. Like we've had mm-hmm. three different iterations of Spider Man, we've had so many people of Batman. Yeah. Let's bring in some of these lesser known characters and make them known into the mm-hmm. public. I think that's awesome. You know, yeah, we had blade back in the 90s but you know mm-hmm. let's have a resurgence of him as well it's there's a lot of characters and i'm actually really intrigued by static shock not just because michael b jordan's attached to it but it's another character i i don't know uh, anything about so it, it makes me want to know more about him just there's a possibility of another film i also yeah. really like you know what disney plus is doing with like miss marvel as well mm-hmm. i think bringing in uh, a, a teenage girl of co- a co- color and i think that's fantastic i don't know yeah. Much about her as well, so it's it's bringing in these different people. Iman Falani from uh, she's from yeah. Canada, I believe. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, um, I yeah, think that's no. who it was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, yeah. um, yeah, no, Static Shock. Uh, Virgil, Virgil was one of the guys, man. Like you, you just your everyday, you know, kid, and 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 we didn't share similarities in terms of how we grew up, just because uh, he's African American, I'm Afro Caribbean. Mm -hmm. So our cultures are a little bit different, but the one thing that brings us all together is our, our story, our, our ancestry, you know, our skin, you know, what we go through on a day-to-day basis, because it doesn't matter where I'm from. I could be from, you know, straight off, straight from Nigeria and come to the U S and, and I'd go through the same thing that any other African American would go through. So I think because of that is what, um, bring, you know, brings that sense of like, I can relate to this kind of character. You know, I can see myself in him. So even though we didn't go to the same type of school or in the same type of neighborhood, um, there was just the fact that this guy could be me. He looks like me. He could, I could be easily put in the situation that he was put in. And the things that, uh, that went on, and I would actually recommend watching that show when, if you ever get the chance to, um, before the, before the live action one comes out, um, simply yeah. just because it, it's it's a good it's a good DC show to begin with. It's a it's a good show, and the character is very likable. Um, but someone like me, you know, seeing a guy like that, you know, I got locks, he has locks, you know, just different things like that. You know, it's just uh, and him saving the day, protecting yeah. his neighborhood, you know, against all kinds of people. Those are just things that really inspire you when you're a kid. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a it's crazy, like because that's your, you're a kid. You have take so many much, so much information, a lot more than you, you know. Adults give kids credit for they they they're sponges and they absorb so many different things and and they look up to different people and uh, characters in TV or, or or reading material too. So it everybody has, looks up to somebody. So it's, yeah, absolutely. It's cool to see, you know, not everybody's going to look up to the same exact hero. So it's cool to see representation out there and different great characters brought to life because who cares what the person looks like it's all about what's inside their heart that mm-hmm. makes them truly who a great character i think that's yeah. why I, think. No, and absolutely. I, just, and I agree with that yeah i i can agree with that yeah they might um my, that's one thing i'm excited for is the miss marvel show even though the ancestry is differently my you know my wife is mexican so we have a, a, a daughter who is hispanic and we want to know more about her uh have her be ingrained in the culture too so i would love to see a mexican superhero or a latin american superhero f- so that she can look up to people like that like the the movie of vampires in the bronx which i'll, I'll bring that one up which is a great netflix film but mm-hmm. it sees uh kids who you know are, are mexican and fighting vampires so after she we watched that movie with her she wanted to go and go after vampires because the kids in that film were doing it and yeah. that's, that's, that's awesome that's it's crazy what like she's six years old and she wants to go do like what these kids were doing and you know that's awesome i just want the best for her and growing up i don't want you know people unfortunately you know like it's a tough place and people do get judged but we need to break stop doing that like it's because for like it, it's 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 I don't know it's it's a more it's a bigger conversation that needs to ha- happen. People need to. Of course, yeah, yeah. It, it's but anyway, I don't. Want, we can talk about that for a long time. No, but, we, you know, we, but you, yeah. you're, making, you you're saying the stuff that needs to be said. You know, it does. And yeah, it, 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 it's, a, it's true. I mean, like I hate to, um, and I won't. Re- I won't really get into the because I won't. I won't really get too much into this because I, you know, I don't want to start anything. Um, <laughs> but if you just look at you know what's going on with the elections. And and I like I said I won't really get into it, um, just because I know everyone that's viewing may have different you know opinions on this. Um, but the reason I'm bringing it up is because um I saw a tweet from this uh, 
this lady whose daughter saw, you know, like Kamala Harris mm -hmm. and, you know, she was a black girl. And she was like, the one thing she, she was smiling and she's like, mom, you mean to tell me I can be a vice president too? And, you know, it made me think, it made me sit down and think like, you know, wow, like this girl until seeing what happened a couple weeks ago, up until that point, this girl didn't think that she could have ever become a politician if that's, you know, because of how she looks and yeah. because she's a woman and stuff. So, and that goes back to, um, and like I said, I don't want to elaborate too much on it, but um, that goes back to like what we were talking about with, with superheroes too. It's the same thing. It's like, um, obviously we can't become, you know, we, we, we can't have all these powers and everything, but it's the, it's the, sometimes the morals or the way that someone acts and the lessons that you can grab. Cause like Star Wars, for example, has so many lessons and so many different things that can teach you about how to live a better life and how to treat people. And those are things that can affect children when they watch yeah. it and when they take that stuff in and it can shape them into in becoming someone. And, and it, it definitely shaped me like watching Star Wars and things growing up, I would see how some of these people act. And I'm like, me being a deep thinker that I am, I would be like, even at that age, I'm like, you know what, how can I apply this to my life in my everyday life? You know, I can't, I, I don't have the force. I don't, I, I can't wield a lightsaber and stuff, but I can, I can be more like Obi-Wan or I can be more like somebody like Ahsoka Tano or something. I can be more like this person, you know? Yeah. So representation and all that stuff does matter for sure. And it's also taking the characteristics of what you're seeing. Mm -hmm. Obviously you can't be a superhero, but it's taking the characteristics of the character you're seeing and pr applying them to your life as well. Yeah. And uh, yeah, just trying to make you know, trying to be better and be similar like what you're seeing to it. Mm -hmm. It's a, there's a, so much ingrained uh, as we're like from entertainment wise too, that we can actually kind of apply ourselves because you know, who knows how, what people's home lives are going to be like, exactly. But yeah. you could, you, what's always going to be there are those, those films, those stories that you can, you can physically have and have repeat readings or uh, viewings of, and then like, that's never going to change. Heard, you can always look up to you. You know, I've heard so many people, grow up in some really bad situations. And like I said, I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to be negative, but <laughs> <laughs> there's a positive to what I'm saying. Um, you know, they grew up in some really bad situations. I won't really go into it. Um, but grew up in some bad situations, but because they had things like these different movies and these characters and things to kind of some form of, of, of escapism that allows them to kind of escape in, 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 cause I also deal with a lot of anxiety too. Um, uh, not 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 uh, not chronically, but I do have uh, my episodes, and I do, and I've dealt with depression for a very long time, especially after uh, with my yeah. sister. And things like comic books and movies and all that stuff really helped me. It really helped me, like took me out for some really dark thoughts, man. Like just reading this stuff, it was it was a way for me to escape, a way for me to see the good in this. And like I would come back and I'll, I'll feel happy. I feel great. And, that, and that's why I always try to make an effort to smile and, and, and be as happy as I can because, you know, I just love comic books, man. Like there's so many just and and, and just this world to, to there's a lot of positive to it. There's a lot of positives to it, man. And, and, and I wish more people would read comic books. <laughs> that's true. I know I need to get back into uh, that because I've kind of like I want to show my daughter those too and go to the comic book store. Like we go to the old video game stores at times, but I want to go take her to a comic book shop too. Mm -hmm. and kind of I mean, even it. watching the movies too, you know? Yeah, she loves watching the movies. Like uh, especially my wife. Uh, and I'm gonna tell the story. Like if she could, she would watch like Black Panther on repeat every single day forever, <laughs> or like Avenger, like any of those Marvel films. She could just yeah. like I'll wake up on my day off and also I'm like. Is that, is that Avengers playing in the background? And sure enough, she's watching. It. I'm like, didn't you just watch this yesterday? She's like, shut up, Adam. This is a great movie. I'm like, okay, I got you, honey. Yep, yep, I, I yep. That's awesome. It's, <laughs> uh, uh, so anyway, uh, um, when you, because uh, obviously you're you're known you're known quite. You have you know a lot of subscribers and stuff like that, and you're known in the community as a, a reactor, and you've been reacting to a ton of shows as well. What's your favorite show to react and what's your least show, favorite show to react to? Ooh, that's a really tough question. <laughs> and don't, let, don't frustrate any of the fan bases. That's the question. <laughs> let me see. Let me see. What the best way I can uh, I, the best way I can answer this. I mean, there are um okay. Cause I don't think I have a singular show. Yeah. 
that I, I really like. I would say right now I'm really enjoying The Mandalorian Season 2. It's been a lot of fun uh, for me right now. I've had really good years reacting to The Flash with my mother. Yeah. Um, Those she, are fantastic, by the way. Your mom <laughs> reactions are – I love seeing oh, she, your mom. She's just as animated as you are. <laughs> she, great. I, I get it from her. She's dramatic. She uh, <laughs> <laughs> she she has her own fan base, man. Like, there's literally people who subscribe to me just for my mom. They're like, you know what? I'm only here for your mom. Sorry. And I'm like, it's all good, man. It's okay. <laughs> I love it. But, no, I've had so many great memories watching The Flash with my mother. So I would say – uh, the Flash, The Mandalorian's been a lot of fun. Um, I've had a great time with The Boys season two. Some of the best uh, times I've had reacting, just watching that show. Um, my least favorite, I, t- I I tend not to watch shows that I don't like. Yeah, for too long. Um, if I'm reacting to something, I'd probably give it maybe like two, one to five. If it's a show specific, uh, specifically, I give it maybe episodes one to episodes five to kind of see if it grows on me. Um, and if if I never upload it again, just know I didn't like it or I just wasn't that excited. Um, and there were a few shows like that. Um, there were a few shows like that. Like, uh, man, I don't want to say any any of them. But they're like, oh man, why did you? <laughs> yeah, you're good. You're good. Don't you don't have to. We, we'll talk later about that question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no. Uh, is, but there were a few though. There were a few. Yeah. So one of our our favorite shows here on Almost Sideways is well, at least a couple of the guys like the show. Uh, Dexter. Have you ever seen Dexter? That's one I haven't seen. No, that's on my list. Yeah, that, I think that would be. There's some crazy stuff, especially the first four seasons are like just non-stop like that's crazy jaw dropping stuff i think that show would be uh, something worthy of your time especially uh, just watching that i think that's if even if you don't react to it just watching that mm-hmm. show is fantastic i think you'll like it a lot i mean i do have a show that i have to replace right now because i'm finished with it so i will i will yeah that dexter has been on my list i've heard some people talk about that one actually so it's interesting you brought it up <laughs> there, well anytime we can bring up that show it's like it's perfect we don't really talk about tv shows too much on our mm-hmm. podcast on youtube so i'm like I've, i got the perfect guy to do that with <laughs> just drop a little <laughs> nugget there uh, and yeah um, and the, whole, the whole tv show thing too is, is is a lot new for me too like it's still pretty new for me just because yeah. um the main one i did was the flash like some of yeah. the arrow stuff a couple years ago but I think I started getting more into exploring different types of TV shows within the last year. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, I did more movie reviews cause that's obviously that's how we met with yeah. Ryan and stuff in that community. I did more movie reviews and, and stuff like that, but I started experimenting with more shows over time. Yeah. That's what I was about to actually go into actually. Um, so I know that there was a transition period where you were doing like a ton of movie stuff and ranking the trailers and which you probably, I, you I still, still do, do. Yep. Still, but you, you're kind of moving into that TV space where I know you're doing like walking dead and you crown and some other shows too. I probably uh, I've missed out on, but mm-hmm. uh, when did you decide to kind of transition into that? Um, I would say the pandemic kind of ushered that in mainly just because there wasn't a lot of movies to go see. Yeah. Um, because I remember in between, you know, like doing the flash, cause I do all sorts of stuff on the channel within anything that has to do with nerd content, whether it's a reaction, a live discussion, um, or just like a, a news video, like just a commentary, like something happens. Okay. Here's my opinion on this. Or, yeah. you know, like yesterday I did an opinion video on the whole Wonder Woman situation going to HBO max. I made a video just the, talking about that. So I think, uh, what really made that. Uh, I started doing more shows was one I needed to and shout out to to, to, to Sean Chandler. He's amazing. Like he, I uh, got his course that he was offering a while back and we, t- we spoke about different techniques and things like that. Cause his growth was amazing on YouTube. So yeah, um, it's crazy, huh? It's crazy. And I, I spoke with him and, and, and we shared some ideas and I learned some stuff from him. So one of the things I took from him was just being able to like, to, to, cause he's a planner and I was like, you know what? I should start planning some of my content too. And I'm like, okay, there's no, there's not really any movies coming out right now. Movie theaters are closed. Um, I don't really feel like watch, uh, do movie reviews to old, older films. What if I just did reactions to certain shows that people have been asking me to do? Cause I'm like, yeah. you know what? Let me listen to my audience. Cause um, they come first at the end of the day. And exactly. I said, you know what? Let me listen to what they want. And some of them, they would, would recommend, like, okay, do this show, do this show. And I was like, you know what? I would always be like, ah, nah, I don't have the time for it. <laughs> nah, nah. And I was like, you know what? Let me do it. Let me give it a shot. And then I started. I was I was really killing it with, with Harley Quinn, but I got to get back on that. 
Um, and I just started doing other shows, other expanding it because you know the Arrowverse and what's going on on, on, on DC TV is kind of slow, slow. Yeah, and it was off season, so I was like, you know what? Let me let me do other things. That's you know, so I'm not so much depending on one particular show for my growth. So I just started expanding. It's awesome. I think it's a very smart. You know, Sean Chandler is a great influence. I haven't had the opportunity. I haven't reached out quite yet to to have him be on a segment like this, which I will in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, he's he's a very smart guy. Like his planning is a big thing, and I know that he. You know, I was a Patreon a patron supporter of him for a while, and yeah, it's very smart guy. And that's where I, when I was doing YouTube, I always try to plan out, and I would you know focus mostly on the movie stuff. And like even right now on the podcast, like I got all next month already planned out, and I'm beginning to plan out January's like episodes as well for my little mm. podcast segment because it just it just also just gives me plans like this is what I need to accomplish. Like this mm -hmm. is my thing instead of like. Twiddle my thumbs like what do I need to do now? What's what should I do? What should I do? That's a crazy thing. That was um that was a lot of my of my of the beginning of the YouTube career was that was exactly that. Um, yeah, even exactly. up to last year, I was like, you know what? I would just wake up and be like, you know what? What am I gonna record today? And then I would spend like three hours in the morning trying to figure out what to do. Whereas now my whole approach is different. You know, I would plan um even because I've been doing a lot more Patreon too. Yeah uh, lately. And so I would plan out how I'm going to upload, what I'm going to upload to Patreon, what days, how many, you know, how, how frequently I'm going to upload this, um, you know, stuff like Cobra Kai. I started doing Cobra Kai. I had a lot of fun with that amazing show. Finished it. It's awesome. But, um, but things like that, I would plan it out, schedule it. And, you know, this is cause like right now I have a whole, I, I would say maybe 30 reaction videos sitting on my computer right now, just ready to upload just because I would take, you know, I would record in advance. I would probably record like six episodes in one day or, you know, the next day do that. And then uh, I had an editor um, that's helping me out from time to time, commission based and awesome. help. Yeah, it's help helps put the work up and planning is a great thing. That's just all really what I'm trying to say. Like planning is a great thing and, and having an idea and a goal as to what you're trying to achieve. Yeah, it's exactly. Awesome. Yeah, I so speaking of planning like uh so for my on my shows i do like two interviews a month and then i do like a nostalgic base for older review or whatever and then i've been doing a, a first time watch review that's what i started doing now i made a bunch of thumbnails for like future nostalgic reviews and that, until today i didn't realize i misspelled the word nostalgic on every single <laughs> thumbnail and i created like 15 of these things Man. so, so you i'm like do it all yeah, but the good thing is I didn't like give anybody a fans notice I made these. Mm -hmm. So until this story came out, this is the first time anybody knew that I <laughs> spelled. But I, I had to, I'm like, well, delete those 15 and after we do a bunch of them. But hey, man, just make sure you spell the stuff right. That's all you have to do. <laughs> yeah, someone, someone, <laughs> so someone, someone corrected me on that actually yesterday. Um, oh, I put, I yeah, I put in uh, something. I put, a, I said, uh, is this going to kill the theater industry? And I, I spelt it fatter. And then someone was like, so I was like, yeah, I'm um, you spelt it wrong. And it was like five hours in. I was like, crap. <laughs> I had to go back in and re-edit it. And I'm like, man, I wonder how many people saw this. <laughs> yeah. That's a bad thing though. But like I wish Twitter would have like an edit button. Cause I've been called oh, that on wish. edit. Hey, they have that fleet option now. Fleet. fleet. What's that? It's basically like Instagram. You can post like a little story on Twitter now. Oh. It's basically Facebook and Instagram do that already, but we can't have an edit button on tweets. So <laughs> interesting. I don't understand. I don't know. Anyway. Uh, all right. So when you, uh, are you full time on YouTube? Um, as of right now? Yes. Um, I own a small business, which I do um, uh, work in uh, daily, you know, just from time to time, just little things. Yeah. I'm not actively involved as as much as I used to be, um, but yeah, YouTube is a full time gig for me. Uh, uh, when did you kind of like say? Because it's probably really scary to do so, especially with all this, you know, the YouTube landscape always changing, especially with the monetization of it. Uh, yeah. But when did you when you kind of make that jump? It's like, okay, I'm gonna tip my toe in this water and see if I can do it. It was um, you mean like full time? Yeah, full time. Yeah. 
I think it was maybe uh, I put it this way. I have okay. So between one thousand subscribers and now, now we're at person forty-five. Um, between one thousand and now, I have went from full time to part time to full time to part time just because of situ- situational stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, the business required me to be more involved at times. Mm-hmm. Um, but there was one specific time I told I told my father because the family business. I told my father I said, you know what? Um, I want to give this thing like a real go. I want to give this a real shot. Um, I said if I don't get to thirty thousand subscribers, and I had like maybe ten thousand, like a couple months before, I was like if I don't get to thirty thousand subscribers by this time, then I'm gonna spend more of my t- attention elsewhere. Mm-hmm. And I worked my butt off. I researched, I planned, and within two months of that conversation, I was at 35. Wow. You know, and um, and at that point I was already I already had a groove. I was going in, I was, you know, doing certain stuff. And yeah, I think I just really just went in for it. I think I just went in for it. And because of the way that I edit now, um, if my, you know, if my small, you know, if my business requires me to be involved, I could have videos already scheduled out. And, the, you know, especially with if I'm just like pre recording a lot of stuff, because some day there's literally some days that I don't do anything. There'd be like yeah. a fright and it becomes kind of like a passive thing, passive income kind of thing. And it's like a Thursday, like a, a, let's say a Thursday or a Friday, I don't feel like doing something or I have to do something else. I already have videos up and the cycle keeps on going. Yeah. So that's crazy. That's crazy. Like you I, would said, say, I would say about a year ago, maybe about a year and a half, a year and a half, two years ago is when I really decided I was going to go in, go in for it. Mm-hmm. And you, like you said, you had a, like a big backlog of like just stuff to sit in there, wait, ready to release. That, that's mm-hmm. smart. Like planning ahead. Plus also like if I could take a day off here and you, you can plan out those days too, if you mm-hmm. want. Yep. Uh, with the changing of YouTube, monetization and being a reactor how hard is it do you get like a lot of copyright stuff on those or what's the process oh of man it's a, that's a tough thing. it's a it's a ongoing um challenge i would say just trying to figure out what's the best thing to do um youtube went through periods where it was okay and you, you wouldn't get as much block so you maybe just get a claim but now they're blocking on site you know, they're just blocking things on site. And uh, I had a conversation with um with a few other guys in, in the reactor community, Blind Wave and Normies and uh, a few other Brit Smash, a couple other people in our in, in, in our community um over the uh, sometime last weekend. And we talked about this briefly, and most if not all of us have you know, we have to make certain changes um on you know the way how we upload. Like applying certain things on the video so that the the bots don't fi- don't don't find it you know and then, and usually what would happen if we because as long as we're within the right because we are within the right as reactors we are within legal uh, we have legal rights to what we're doing um with reactions because it's under fair use and you can fight it so if there's a situation where i don't get a block from you know the walking dead from shop amc um but they block but they manually block it two days later I can always go in, type up a dispute. I already have a dispute that I already have pre-typed for different companies, just because each company has a different thing. So I have a different, I, I have pre-typed responses for different companies that I get that I will occasionally get blocks from. Um, that goes back to planning ahead. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it does. I got a whole Google Doc sheet with all my responses. Um, I have one for WB, one for Disney, one for Lionsgate, one for. AMC, and I would, you know, I would, I, and, and I would customize it, and I would explain, you know, this is what I'm doing. I put a timer up in the video, this, that, and then normally within a day or two, they release the claim. Yeah. So um, that's been good at least, but um, the challenge has just been finding new creative ways, not only to do something legally, but mm-hmm. also to for it to work for the, you know, for fans, like how our fans gonna and how our supporters going to view the content. You know, are they gonna have any issues with the view, you know, viewing, you know, can they comprehend what's going on? So it's just, is it every day is just a lesson. You're, you're never not busy in this, in, in this business, especially, yeah. you know, what we do. So even though you have pre-recorded stuff and you might not record or take it, you might take a day off from that. You're still trying to like learn and 
try to like fight some stuff too. So there's, there's background, a lot of stuff too. It's always work. It's always work is research, a lot of studying. I actually spend time watching other content creators bigger than me and kind of studying their channel, trying mm -hmm. to see how they do things. If I get a chance to reach out to them, I would. I'd reach out to them, ask them, you know, how they do this or how do you yeah. do that or do you mind sharing this, you know, or I'm struggling with this. So yeah, there's a lot of work behind the scenes. I'm always on, on the Creator Studio app on my phone. I'm always studying my analytics constantly. It's a lot of work behind the scenes. A lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, nice. Awesome. So um, I did, I put out a poll or I put out a question thing up on uh, Twitter right before we put po posted this. You could follow me on Twitter at Adam Sideways. I'll leave all, again, I said Matthew's stuff is going to be in the comments or the show notes of this. There was a question for you, Matthew. Okay. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to read the question first and then I'm going to tell you who it is. Okay. okay. She said, please ask him, how did he get to so famous? I really want to know. And that was from Miss Milky Way, Amanda Haynes. <laughs> oh, <my sister. laughs> so, yeah, how did you become so famous? That's the question people want to know, man. Man, I don't, I'm not even think I'm famous, man. I got so far to go. It's, this is a journey. I'm still in the beginning of this thing. And I'm very humble to be here and be humble to to do what I do quite yeah. frankly. Um, but you know, even though it's my sister trolling, trolling me, I will answer the question seriously. Um, yeah, no, it honestly hard work. Nothing ever comes to you for free. Some people, some people get easy. Some people get off easy, but you can't rely on luck all the time. Uh, sometimes you really have to put in the work. Some people have to work harder than others. Like I say this all the time. I'm like much love to Durban. I love Durban so much. Durban is so great. Durban works so hard on YouTube and he's been growing for so long and man, Durbin needs a kick. Durbin needs a real kick. He needs that love because he's one of the greatest content creators I actually know on the platform. So, but he works hard and yeah, you can see his growth over the years. Um, 7,000, 7, exactly. 7,000. He just got 7,000 and he deserves a lot more in my opinion. So Durbin, yeah, if you're watching yeah. this brother, I'm, I'm in your corner supporting you. I'm always watching so your videos. And, you know, he's a good pal. He's a good pal to have. He works really hard. So, yeah. it, it, you know, but then there's other people that might, you know, be on YouTube for like three months and get like 100K subs. How'd that happen? I don't know. It's a lot of factors involved. Some people and I would talk. I would actually talk to some some of these people. I'm like, man, how'd you grow to 100K? And they're like, dude, man, I honestly don't know. I just posted the videos and it worked. Sometimes the algorithm likes to bless certain people. <laughs> yeah, uh, other people got to work real hard. But the, the main thing is for those who are watching this on uh, almost sideways who want to be a content successful content creator, you always have to put in the work, regardless of what you have working for you and what you don't have working for you. You know, you have to be real with yourself and analyze your weaknesses, um, and you know, see how you can work on them or how you can use it to your benefit and um, work on them, study, you know, survey other content creators, do your research, educate yourself, you know, okay, how can I improve my camera quality? How can I improve my audio? Okay, I need a new mic, okay, I, but I have to work for it. Okay, maybe put in some extra hours at work to get yourself a new mic, different things that you can plan yeah. um, to grow. And like uh, my, my fiance, she actually just broke 1000 subscribers today in three months. And I'm very happy for her, but um, you know, fortunately, she, you know, uh, she had me to kind of guide her along and kind of yeah. teach her some of the tricks of the trade. Um, but when it was for me, I had no one giving me any tips or tricks. It was all me just kind of just studying and and trying to learn. So that's just the main thing I'm trying to say with all that. You know, I can really I can elaborate more, but I don't want to take up too much time. But just no. keep on working and uh. You will grow, and 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 for those who work, their time will come, and you will get you will get blessed with it. Trust me, you will. Just just think about it. if you apply yourself and put a ton of hard work, and you start to see some growth. That's a great feeling. Yeah, somebody and, who's who was there for a while. Like I mm -hmm. did YouTube, and I I I would consider myself a kind of a fortunate because I hit in the first year in the movie space because there's so many different movie people. Yeah, I hit before the year hit, and like. 10 months i hit a thousand subscribers and by the year and a half i was there i was three thousand so i was very fortunate for that growth 
I did not mm-hmm. take it for granted. And people came up to me and asked, I'm just like, man, you just have to know how to do your descriptions, your tags, your mm-hmm. titles, and this is and make your thumbnails. You just and you have lit good and quality. It's a lot of hard work, and you kind of I made you have to make sacrifices to do something. And you if you if you want it, you're gonna achieve it. If you that's yeah, it's, and, and it's a lot of hard work though. And it's one of those things too. Is like you got to work smarter too, um, work harder and smarter. You don't. It's yeah. not just working smarter or working hard because you can work hard as Jack and get no results. You can work smart but you're not really putting in the work. So you kind of have to find a way to, to combine the two um, to get the best result. Like if you think you're, you're working hard, you're working smart, you're really not. You have to work harder and smarter than you already think you are. You really got to push yourself. Don't, don't push yourself in an unhealthy way. I would never recommend that. You know, get your sleep, have good nutrition, make sure your mental health is good. You never want to mess up those things, especially your mental health. If you're a spiritual person, your spiritual health, physical health don't skimp on those those are important too but you have to work very hard and very smart at what you're doing and again like i said i, I, would, I would shout out sean again and 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 the lessons that i learned from him um from his course and stuff like that has really helped me you know you have to also invest in yourself yeah. you have to invest financially sometimes um to really sometimes get the results you you, you need and you have to really dedicate yourself to learning. That's like one of the biggest things too. Like, you know, you, whatever you think, you know, just be like, you know what? I don't really know this at all. Yeah. And I am ready to learn. So, you know, be, be ready to be a student of life. <laughs> student of life. Yep. And um, I just saw one more question just came through on, uh, on Twitter here for you. Uh, his name is Cosman. Uh, let's see. Let me read the question first before it make sure it's appropriate. Okay. Uh, <laughs> no, it is. Okay. It's good. Uh, okay. This is my, he said, are you going to, watch any of these series is in the near future and it's a list a bunch of series uh peaky blinders the crown which we kind of we met, you hinted at the crown um altered carbon on netflix uh, castlevania barbarians dark crystal romulus his dark materials des the undoing britannia uh, queen's gambit transformers war of cybertron so i can answer all of the so uh okay so Go, go again from the beginning. I'll just answer okay. a quick answer. Okay. Peaky Blinders. Yes. It's been on my list for a very long time. The Crown. Not reacting to it, but currently watching it. There we go. Altered Carbon. I've seen the first episode. I was like, why is this so inappropriate for no reason? But I'm going to continue watching it. <laughs> yeah. That would be copyright strike. Probably inappropriate. <laughs> Not I, would for to, all. I would have to highly edit that. To yeah, for you it. would have. Safe. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Castlevania. Castlevania has been on my list for such a long time, but yes, I do plan to watch that show. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, Barbarians. Yes, I saw the trailer for it a couple weeks ago on my list. All right, Dark Crystal. I was gonna watch it till I heard that it didn't get picked up for another season. So I'm like, why even bother? Yeah, <laughs> uh, Romulus. Never heard of that one. Man, me either. I didn't. Uh, his Dark Materials. Yes, actually. I saw the second yeah. season just came out, so I'm like, you know what? I got to give it a shot. I'll do it. Yeah. The Queen's Gambit. That is something that I've been trying to get my fiance to watch for so long, and if she doesn't buck up, I'm going to just have to watch it myself. <laughs> yeah. Uh-oh. Yeah. Shots fired. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, Brit- Britannia? I think that's how I'm saying it. Yeah, yeah. I, I heard, I've heard of that one. I, I'm definitely willing to check that one out. Yeah. And the last one was Transformers War of for Cybertron. I actually am actually glad you brought it up because I forgot about it and it was something that I meant to check out a while ago. So yeah, mm-hmm. there we go. perfect. Yeah. All right, man. Well, that's the, that's thank you for the questions from the guys that listen on Twitter and the one troll that we have <laughs> your sister. <laughs> but no, I, I actually, that question turned into a really good, like no yeah. conversation yeah, yeah. too. So thank you, Amanda. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, I think it's a good spot to kind of wrap it up today. Uh, we got a lot of, Great conversation, but before we close, Matthew, let, let people know at home one more last time where they could find you on YouTube and social media. Yeah, uh, you guys can find me here on YouTube at Matthew V. Haynes, just as how it's spelled on the screen. I don't know if you guys can see that, but uh, just like that. And um, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and uh, like TikTok, stuff like that at Matthew V. Haynes. There we go. TikTok. No. Okay, anyway. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so again, guys, all Matthew's 
Uh, P. Haynes is uh, – wow, I just got flustered there because I made a joke. Anyway, all of Matthew's links will be in the show notes of this episode on YouTube and on the podcast as well. If you guys are interested in listening just to audio forms because there's sometimes a little extra content in these episodes that you don't see here on YouTube, follow us at Almost Sideways Movie Podcast. It's a lot of great fun conversation with interviews, deep dive conversations of films, and some power rankings as well with Todd, Terry, Zach, and myself. We've really been doing doing podcasts. And yeah, it would be really fun for you guys to come over and listen to those. And again, on YouTube, some segments of audio versions of the movie podcast will be on here as well. So, And you'll see video of my face here as well. So anyway, that's a long outro. My name is Adam. We'll see you next time.